Welcome to Wine Road, the wine, when, and where of Northern Sonoma County. I'm your host, Marcy Gordon, with Beth Costa, Executive Director of the Wine Road. Once again, our show is on the air through the generosity and support of Ron Rubin Winery. Ron Rubin specializes in Russian River Valley Chardonnay and Pinot Noir, wines that to me truly capture the essence of the region. Check out their website at ronrubinwinery.com. Welcome to Episode 184. Today our guest is Dr. Lee from the Asia Pacific Wine and Spirits Institute. Welcome, Dr. Lee. Thank you very much. Uh, Very happy to be here. I'm excited to finally connect. We've been trying to do this for a couple of months, and then different things have gone wrong, and so we've rescheduled several times. It's great to have you here this morning. So tell us exactly what the Institute, what the mission is, and how it was formed. Certainly. Well, it really began um, in terms of enjoying a good story, the culture behind it, and uh, I was born in Africa and grew up during a period when there was apartheid and races were segregated and it was not very easy to interact with one another. Hmm. However, I had the fortune of um, being educated in a Jesuit uh, institution which um, allowed the mixing of uh, the different communities. So as a result of that, education, you know, wanting to be able to interact in a mindful and also in a very productive manner with with others within the community that we live in, who may not be similar to ourselves, was truly um, fermented in in, in my mind um, from that age onwards. So when it came to the Asia-Pacific Wine and Spirit Institute, it's a non-profit organization, and our purpose is really to spread, promote the different cultures of the world, but through food, wine, and spirit. And as you know, when you are drinking, whether it's a wine or a spirit or certain foods, they, they tell you a story, you know, where they came from, how they made, and that's, that's how really... Um, the Institute came to be. So now we have over 30 different courses, uh, ranging from wines of the world to great foods like uh, caviar, there's the cigars, there's the foie gras, there's the spirits, a plethora and range for any student who has an interest in how those came about, why they are sitting at the sort of pinnacle of delicacies and certain foods, Um, and it's really to promote all these um, courses, but in a modern method, which is all online. Right. I feel like you've made it so, you've made it so accessible that way for anyone. Yes. Yes. The origins make so much sense because when you visit a culture, that's the best way to connect is through food and wine. It's really the entry point from, in my opinion. Well, I've traveled to over a hundred countries. I've certainly found that to be definitively true, from Ethiopia, going down to Chile, right across to Inner Mongolia, and obviously Africa. Yes, it is through food and oftentimes wine or certain teas or coffee that you see the embodiment of culture. Right. So one thing that I, when I first uh, caught your eye, I think I came across, whether it was on... I don't know, TikTok or YouTube, uh, videos of you with um, your etiquette videos. And I mean, I ended up watching probably 10 or 12 of them because I thought, oh my gosh, these are so great. Each one is just one simple tip. So what was the, what inspired you to, to, to do those? And in, in terms of um, a person, you know, you, you have to respect yourself first and foremost. And one of the ways that you would do that is to spend the manner in which you interact with others. Mm -hmm. So if you think about it, we live in a world that has approximately 193 countries, spread over seven continents, and there are 8 billion people. And we are living at a time 
where there are seven generations living concurrently. And yet, through a touch of a finger, we have all the potential information that we could gather, garner, and collect literally at our fingertips. It is pretty amazing. So it's, it's not so it's not uncommon that you're going to find different views, different behavior. Right. You would find someone who, perhaps, from the generation that is uh, generation alpha or generation X, they prefer to be addressed as when you're giving a talk, hello, everyone. You might have the generation that is perhaps plus 55. They're more familiar with good evening or good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Mm -hmm. So these, these are the different aspects of etiquette. And I think the two words that I often reinforce with others is always consider the situation and the environment you're in. So, for example, a North American visitor going to India, how would they react when they, when they perhaps are sitting down at a meal and there are no utensils and they have to use their hands? So situations like that. Right. And, and with my travels, that really brought about the involvement and uh, the creation of the etiquette video. And also my staff, you know, who are quite instrumental and they're of that generation where they appreciate having more etiquette uh, advice. They want to do the right thing, but they don't know what that is necessarily. Yeah, well, it depends what is the right thing. What's right in one culture is not necessarily right in another. And right. it's being able to define that makes life interesting. Also, having etiquette and manners, it's, it's a show of respect. You know, it shows that I respect you and your culture. It really helps you bridge a lot of gaps through etiquette, I think. Unquestionably, if you are able to maneuver through the maze of different cultures, whether it's singularly or collectively uh, in a social environment or a business um, situation, you will have already covered what are the essentials of good communication. Right. And, you know, when people meet you for the first time, whether we are aware of it or not, it's instinctive that our mind looks to you and there's millions of, of, of these electrical synapses going through our brain and our body saying, how can I connect with this person? And if there is no connection, I think you and I, we've all been in a situation, we don't know an individual we've just met, and yet we find, mm, I don't really like them. <laughs> and we don't know why. Right. But we don't feel we can connect with them. And that's what it's all part of, you know, trying to make that connection through understanding others. That's true. I mean, you definitely have a first, that's the first impression. You immediately yeah. connect or you're immediately just kind of mm, trying to figure out how to connect. Exactly. Yeah. So it could be perhaps through the way they speak, what they're dressing. Or perhaps um, if they came to your home and they brought you, uh, let's say, some flowers, which is a very thoughtful gesture. But if you were to give white lilies in certain cultures, that's only presented during funerals. So if you're not aware of that, it's, uh, it's a huge faux pas. Right. So with your wine uh, tips and your um, the wine courses that are online, what are some of your highlights uh, uh, really relating to wine in, as far as your wine career? Certainly the wine courses have been developed with the student in mind, having studied for many, many decades, that students certainly today find it very quick for them to see material as boring. Oh. And when it is, right. uh, they tend to lose interest. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we have pared down the material into literally bite-sized information where the students can read the information, glean the major facts as quick as they can, and at the end of every course, 
there are quizzes, there are videos that they are able to pick up. And one important aspect with all our courses is there is there's a cultural aspect. So, for example, one might say Sonoma, right? Sonoma Wine County. Ah, oh, right. That could be the northern Sonoma, the central, the southern, the, the, the coastal range. Well, you can pick that up from any book. But not many of them would say the name Sonoma actually means Valley of the Moon yeah. from a Native American right. uh, linguistic mm-hmm. uh, perspective. Right. And I think that's important. And, and then when you mention, right, Russian River, okay, why is it called Russian River? Then you go back historically and you find out what happened. So, so in terms of our courses, they, they are really at the fundamental base and they go all the way to the more specialized courses. I love and that they can, go into that much detail. That's fantastic. Yeah, so they are, they are really accessible for you 24-7, and you can study at your own leisure. What is it that piqued your interest to begin with in wine? somewhere, some great dinner that with a great wine, or what was it? No, really, it's my love of stories. Okay. You know, we, I, I grew up with uh, stories being told by my parents, uh, relatives, friends, and they resonated with me, how each story captured um, what their personal experiences were, what was the moral, uh, what was the message. And when you think about wine, each individual wine, it represents a particular year in a particular and specific space and at a unique moment. So every bottle has a story and uh, hence uh, my keen interest in that because stories are what reflect our lives and friendship, sadness and life itself. I love that. Every bottle does have a story. That Every is, bottle tells a story. That is for sure. So true. So I, I know also that you have your own podcast that is called The Wine Buzz. What sort of, uh, what, is, what are the types of guests and, and topics that you have on your podcast for listeners, our listeners to tune in? Every single individual that we have interviewed on The Wine Buzz is representative of a generational change, uh, a catalyst through their actions and behavior, innovation. All of the interviewees that we've had, the guests that we've had, have been very, very gracious in sharing their, their personal experiences, which are most helpful and interesting for listeners. One of the interviewees and guests was uh, is Karen McNeil. Oh, nice. Um, yeah. We had yeah. her on a few months ago, I think. Yeah, we spoke yeah. with Karen with her new edition of the Wine Bible. Yes. Well, you know, that that, um, that book, and it's not just the book. I mean, the book is an embodiment of, of Karen's life. Right. Absolutely. And um, like, like my book. We wanted to talk least. about your book, by the way. So tell us about the title, because one of our features on the podcast is always a wine book uh, we try to feature. So tell us, Dr. Lee, the title and the scope of your book. The title of the book is called um, Master the Art of Manners. Uh, Love it. Day etiquette for any situation. And uh, as I have mentioned earlier on, we live in a world where until 1960, we never had the number of passengers and travelers being able to traverse the entire globe with such ease, whether it's through ship, train, and certainly by airplane. So when you have all these different um, opportunities, you're going to have a change and a grouping of cultures. So wherever you go in the world, you will face that. You enjoy their culture, their food, even their drink. Think about it going back to a simple point where you have a new neighbor uh, moving into you, and they are not from a similar background like yourself. How would you welcome them? How would you greet them? You invite them for dinner. Um, you're having a discussion, like even how to 
prepare wine or food or how to set the table. The book itself has many different scenarios. Uh, I believe the last one is about 160 scenarios oh where you're able to, gosh. oh, what do I do if I'm invited for a party uh, before in terms of RSVP? What happens uh, um, if, if I um, am late? What should I do? Simple aspects like that. Traditionally, you know, Indians from India, if you were to shake hands, whether socially or at a business function, you wouldn't extend your hand to the Indian lady if the husband was there, uh, or even she was there by herself. That's not really respectful. Yet that would not be considered an issue in the Western concept. Right. Well, you know, it's funny. We have, you know, an American tradition like Dear Abby and the etiquette of Emily Post, but no one has really explored etiquette cross-culturally. And this is super important. Like you say, we travel more, we're, we are exposed to more cultures, and to have how helpful to have the etiquette for what to do for a certain culture, because we all have to, you know, we want to be sensitive and be respectful of culture. But I don't think back in the day you ever got that kind of education. Well, no, because um, if you think about it, it's always been those prevailing um, cultures. For example, you know, you, you, you meet someone for the first time in the Western concept, you give them a firm handshake, and you look them in the eye. That's a sign, look me in the eye, I'm looking at you, I can trust you. Yet, if you were to try that very firm look and handshake in Asia, you might not get the same reaction because that very firm handshake and looking at someone in a very, very, what they perceive to be aggressive manner. Yeah, threatening. Um, it's threatening, you know, where they prefer a very gentle handshake and they look... Uh, to the left or to the right, but never right in your eye. But the Western person would believe, well, he's a bit shifty. You know? Right. <laughs> it's so yeah, yeah, so interesting. Right. And also with... And some may not even shake hands. They will bow. Right. Or they put their hands together. Exactly. So also even in culture when you're making a toast, if there's a culture around alcohol or anything, that how you make a toast to someone, how you look in the eye or if you touch the glass or there is a lot of even protocols within that? The protocols, the idiosyncrasies are minutely different in certain cases and vastly in others. So when you are toasting with uh, an Asian uh, culture, the Japanese, the Koreans, the Chinese, you would clink your glasses. But if you were being more respectful of the other person, your glass would always be the rim of your glass would always be below the rim oh, of the other person. Oh, my gosh. Person. Uh, right. Interesting, yeah. A detail yeah, that matters, it's, right. It's the details. And if you're toasting in the Korean culture, when you actually drink, you'd use the hand that's not holding the glass, cover your mouth on the side, and you'd turn your head away, and then you would drink. How interesting. Yeah, these are things you wouldn't know unless you really were looked it up. <laughs> well, it's great to have a book that lays it out for people because I think it is very important to have respect and use your manners and etiquette to show to cross cultures. It's important. I think you have so many avenues where people can connect with you besides your YouTube channel. Uh, your new book, Mastering the Art of Manners, which will be out here soon. So we'll have links to that in our show notes. And then you. your um, credible podcast, The Wine Buzz. Yeah, we'll put links to all of this in the show notes. And Thank you. Yes, we're on TikTok. We're on Instagram. You we're seem on to YouTube. be everywhere. I think it's Instagram where I started watching the etiquette videos. Dr. Lee, you're ubiquitous. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> I know. I thought, oh, my gosh, this man, he's happening. He's on TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> Even I'm like, ah, I don't know. Do I need to do that? You I gotta don't know. be where the people are. <laughs> yeah. Well, you have such well, amazing information. Different generation. Yeah, and and everyone can benefit from the information that you're sharing on those. Yeah, I thought it was fun to watch and interesting. And the classes that you have on your website, if people do have an interest in wine and want to do a little bit more of a deep dive, you have classes on everything imaginable at every level. So. Yeah, I do, and 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 what 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 I have been 
I've been uh, courted and requested um, by a number of, um, you know, the, the corporate uh, institutions. Uh-huh. They 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 often engage me to give talks and uh, seminars and master classes right. for their uh, executives and heads. So when they themselves go out and uh, are engaged in, in negotiations or how they behave when they're going on an international trip, oh, they right. don't create any mistakes. Crucial. Right. That Crucial is, information. Yeah, that's yeah. Right. That could be the meaning of a deal or a deal breaker. Right. Oh, yes. Yes. Definitely. Right. I think that's becoming more and more and more important yeah, as time goes on here. Well, Dr. Lee, we can't thank you enough for taking your time to be with us today. We so appreciate it. We'll put all these links in our show notes so people can find you, read your books, take your classes, and listen to the podcast. And uh, we will see you on the wine road, Dr. Lee. Thank you. (laughs) Yes, I look forward to that. And I certainly uh, look forward to the day when we can, both all of us, sit down and enjoy um, a glass of wine and a certain uh, stimulating uh, conversation. And thank you very much for having me on your show. That we look great. forward to that, It's great too. to connect. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you very much indeed. Mm-hmm. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.